Um, all right, just assure me of one thing, because uh, all you have to do is put your name into the Internet and out jumps all kinds of stuff. Whoever insults Islam or insults the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, deserves capital punishment. Uh, I believe it was a few years back when um, Pope Benedict made some comments. You, you spoke publicly about uh, anyone insulting the Prophet, you know, deserves to die. Um, if I insulted the Prophet Tom Trento, your new friend here, you know, uh, do, I mean, do I deserve to die? You know, Tom, me and you cannot be friends, but we can have a decent relationship. You know, I can only uh, take as friends those people who believe in Allah and who accept his prophets, you know, but we can have a decent relationship. That doesn't mean we can't smile. You know, I can't buy you a cup of coffee. I can't invite you to become a Muslim and my brother in Islam. But definitely, you know, I can't turn away from the Islamic rulings that uh, the Prophet said, whoever insults the Prophet, kill him. This is so clear in his narration. Whoever insults Islam or insults the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, deserves capital punishment. Protesters in Pakistan calling for the hanging of cartoonists at Charlie Hebdo during a march on Thursday. Islam generally forbids depictions of the Prophet Muhammad, and many people in Muslim-majority Pakistan view the satirical magazine's cartoons as blasphemous. In latest developments, lawmakers have approved a resolution condemning publication of such cartoons. The resolution also condemns violence under any pretext. Yet in Lahore on Thursday, supporters of the Sunni Tariq group marched with a banner reading, the sketchmakers must be hanged immediately. While in Islamabad, lawmakers marched outside Parliament House with some chanting, in the name of the Prophet, we're ready to die. <laughs> 17 people were killed in Paris last week by attackers claiming allegiance to Islamic State in Syria and Al-Qaeda in Yemen. You have those people who call themselves so-called moderate Muslims, but you know you have to understand that this uh, classification of extremist and moderate was never something which uh, you know uh, came from the Sharia. It's something which has been presented by the West, presented by the media, in order to give some kind of uh, uh, credence and some kind of legitimacy to those people who are not really practicing Islam. The only distinction we have in Islam is between practicing and non-practicing. <laughs> Imagine a world where your hands become a dictator's enemy number one. Legendary Syrian cartoonist Ali Ferzat was almost killed by Syrian security forces in August 2011 when the civil war broke out there because he dared put pen to paper, drawing cartoons critical of President Bashar Assad. Since then, he's been living in exile in Kuwait and, in view of what happened in Paris, we asked him to tell us about the high price he's paid for his work in Damascus. On the day of August 25, 2011, a security police car with tinted windows was following me with four men inside carrying batons. And then they cornered me in one of the most important squares in Damascus. And four men jumped out of the car and started attacking me. And after about half an hour of driving through which I was still being beaten on my eyes, on my head, with their batons. Then they grabbed my fingers and they started breaking them one by one so to teach me a lesson for insulting the president. And they told me that this is so you learn not to insult the president. It is true they broke me up, but what I did was to break out of the fear that was dominating Syria for the past 50 years. I was not surprised about what happened, and I was pained for those cartoonists. Those artists did not carry a gun or a weapon. They only carried a pen, just like I did. It appears that the pen is mightier than any weapon, as we have seen when the terrorists attacked and killed those cartoonists.
And on this night of all nights, it's important for all of us to keep up the fight to keep the pen mightier than the sword. En route to the Philippines, Pope Francis spoke up on the Papal Plain. He's condemned last week's deadly attacks in Paris, but says it's wrong to insult religious beliefs. You cannot provoke, you cannot insult other people's faiths. You cannot make fun of faith. Seventeen people lost their lives in France after gunmen stormed the offices of satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo for their depictions of the Prophet Muhammad. In response, the Pope says freedom of expression is a fundamental human right, but that it should not offend. Turning to his aide to illustrate this point, I believe you cannot react violently, but if Mr. Gaspari, my great friend, says a curse word against my mother, he can expect a punch. This is normal. Arriving in the Philippines, throngs of people greeted Pope Francis amid one of the biggest security operations in the country's history. Nearly 50,000 soldiers are deployed. The other pontiffs to previously visit the Philippines were both targets of assassination attempts.